DFW DJ School, your boy DJ XL. Today we're covering Serato DJ Intro, and we're going to cover the setup. So we've already got the setup tab clicked. We're in the settings right now. Uh, you'll see on the other end we have the uh, controller mode going here, but we'll get back to that in a second. So click Setup. Your first option here is going to be Hardware. Down below here it says USB Buffer Size, aka Latency. Uh, the lower you make this setting, the tighter the response is going to be between your controller and your computer. So if you're a scratch DJ, you want to set this as low as possible to get the best scratching response time. If you're not a scratch DJ, then this probably wouldn't apply to you. You can set it somewhere in the middle or even up to 512, and it, you probably wouldn't notice a difference. So let's go ahead and just set it in the middle. Click Apply, and you're good to go. Okay, the next section over is going to be your General tab. And the first one we see there on the list is Playback Keys Use Shift. Uh, Serato comes with keyboard shortcuts. And with these shortcuts, you can fire off your uh, samples or, or even do loops. Uh, you don't want to do these accidentally when playing live, so it's a good idea to have this clicked. And in that event, if you have that clicked, you'll have to hit Shift before you hit the, the keyboard shortcut. And this will keep you from doing it accidentally. Uh, next down on the list is Instant Doubles. Meaning if you're playing a track and you want to juggle it back and forth, scratch it back and forth, if you click this, then when the track is playing and you load up the same track, it will load in the identical spot of the song that's playing, as you can see. So that way you can juggle back and forth between the, the two. All right, so that's your instant doubles. Uh, next on the list is your output. Uh, I've got to set the stereo. You should always have it set the stereo. The only case that I could think of that you would not have to have it set the stereo is if you have one speaker. And for instance, some of the uh, older song selections were recorded uh, with sound in different channels. So you'll have the the horns in one, uh, one channel, maybe the, the beat in a different channel, or maybe the guitars in the right channel, the beats in the left channel. Um, ACDC is a good good example of this. Uh, Ship Me All Night has the uh, guitars in the left channel and the beat in the right. So if you're playing it in stereo, you hear both. But if you have it in mono, you're only going to hear one of the two. So unless you're having, uh, for whatever reason, um, using one speaker, this should always be set to stereo unless you're using one speaker. Next down on the list is Use Auto Gain. Uh, what this is going to do if you're playing a song again, inside uh, Serato, and you load a song in the opposite deck, it's going to try to match that gain as close as possible as the uh, software can figure it out. So that way, if you're playing a song at one level, you load a track into the uh, opposite deck, it's going to try to match the level of that song as closely as possible. So that is your auto gain. Show iTunes Library. Uh, when selected, that's going to make your iTunes library visible. And as you can see, mine is visible right over here. If you deselect it, it's going to take it out of there. See? Now the iTunes library is gone. Next down on the list is Send Anonymous Usage Data to Serato. Uh, you can click this if you like. Um, I personally don't like anybody in my business, so... They can get their use, usage data from someone else. <laughs> Next down the list is uh, check for updates. Uh, if you have your software registered, if you're on Serato, Serato's website, you'll get email notifications when there's new software out. But it's a good idea to check this periodically uh, to see if there's updates. Because often those updates will come with more features. Next section is your internal mixer. And first right here we have QMix. In your headphones, which is your cue, uh, this controls what you hear in your headphones, whether you hear what the upcoming track is going to be in the opposite deck, or if you hear what the crowd hears in, in the master, or if you hear a combination of both. So that controls whether you can hear or how much you hear uh, your queued up song that you're going to play next and the master, which what the crowd hears. So this just controls... Um, the mix of that. The next section over is going to be your Q gain, which is your headphone gain. 
if for some whatever reason your controller does not have that on there, you can adjust it right here. And of course, zero's, zero is nothing, and as you move it to the right, it gets louder. Your crossfader curve. This is a good section here to cover. Um, depending upon what kind of DJ you are, if you're a mixed DJ and you don't do a lot of scratching, you're going to want to have it set right here because that's going to be a gradual fade. Let me give you a good example of that real quick. Let me get out of this. Okay, once again, it's set to gradual right here. So you're going to hear the Sierra again. On this other deck, let me go ahead and queue up, push it. Now let's pretend this one two step is uh, towards the end. And you want to bring in the push it. You don't want to mix it, but you just want to bring it in. If you want to do that softly and gradually, you hear how it came in gradually and how the one two step is going out gradually. Now, just the opposite of that would be a sharp curve. On the sharp, as soon as you move your crossfader over even just a little bit, both channels are going to be playing the same volume. Now, that's ideal for scratch DJs, but if you're, if you're a mixed DJ, um, the gradual kind of works out best for you. So that's it in, in a nutshell. Serato DJ intro setting preferences. There you go. DJ XL, DFW DJ School, practice, practice, and then practice some more.